to ventilation system. So, is there something? Let's resume. Is there something for the claw to do? I thought of one thing we could try. NORAD Alpha, support A3, all personnel. Contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. Warning, all personnel. Loading claw operation. Move claw to location, then choose action. Oh, we can click the buttons in succession. That's nice. Right. So now it's poised in the water, right? If there's something down there that we couldn't see and we grab, it should grab it. Does that mean there was nothing? Maybe that means there's nothing. I'm gonna say that means there's nothing. So... Let's check over here. I think I've tried to grab here as well. It's awfully loud in this area. But you know, all in a day's work. Let's see if we can grab over there. I see. So it's made to load things. how you can back up actions like that. That is quite nice. Okay, so maybe this would be... I mean, it, this doesn't appear to be useful for moving anything. Maybe it would be useful for being under attack by a hostile robot, no? Now that we know how to use it... So maybe if we leave this area... We'll encounter this robot. That's all I can think of. How's our energy? Pretty good. We're still not getting in there, as far as I know. Warning. All personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. Warning. All personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. Warning. All personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. You are currently in the connecting corridors of the NORAD 6 station. Warning. Sleeping all gas has been introduced into the ventilation NORAD system, ventilation rendering all personnel unconscious. Warning. All personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. We could depressurize the environment, could we not? Warning. All personnel, contamination detected But then the door might not open for us. Oh, I see. We're looking through a crack in the glass. Huh. All personnel, contamination detected in Could it be that we're missing anything around here? Warning. All personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. No. Okay. What if... One more thing to try. What if we head downstairs again? And if this doesn't work, I think we'll go to the last uh, time zone. Warning. All personnel. Contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and 
ventilation system. Warning, NORAD Alpha South A3 station detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. Okay, never mind that. Let's uh, increase the area here to maximum pressure, which we're supposed to avoid, just to see if we can kickstart anything. Let's see if it stayed the same. Unequal pressure between this chamber and yep. submarine dock. Equalized pressure before entering. Avoid maximum pressure as some objects may implode. Now let's use the claw and see if we can do anything there with that. Loading claw operation. Move claw to location, then choose action. Nothing there. I guess not. I just realized. I guess I'm traveling back to the same point in time every time I arrive at a time zone? Which would explain why the robot issued the same challenge to me this time as last time? Attack submarine. Access platform A4. Alpha set. Lower attack sub. Prep sub for launch. Board commence boarding. Well, that's new. We never tried to board it after just pressing launch prep, but we know we have no tor no torpedoes. Okie dokie. Glad I tried that. And we're in. Yeah, who is that robot anyway? I know how to drive this thing. All you have to remember is one simple rule. Right, right, left, 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 right, right, right. Negative, Def Sub 2. We've lost communication with all sectors and there's been an unauthorized launch from Sub Bay Alpha. Intercept bogey immediately. You're authorized to attack with lethal force. We're en route to NORAD, but we're 20 clicks southwest, so you'll have no direct backup. The auto defense systems in Beta and Gamma sectors are online and will support you with torpedo fire. Alpha and Delta sectors are offline and you'll have no additional backup there. Over. Oh boy. Collision avoidance is good. Head left. Mm. 
Music kicked on in, folks. Alert! Incoming torpedo. Come on, auto avoidance system. That's not good. There's no Alert. action I could take there. Hello, whale. Left. Don't threaten me. There we go. Alert! Incoming torpedo. Warning! Impact damage. Map is helpful. Warning, impact damage. Alert. Warning, impact damage. Warning, impact damage. Warning, impact damage. That's a lot of mines. Warning, hull breach imminent. Not good. We made it. It was awfully nice that that whole thing was in full screen. That was a purely defensive endeavor. Have we returned to the base from whence we came? Also known as whence we came? Was that just a whole, like a torpedo avoidance exercise? Did we cause somebody to waste their torpedoes? Wait a second. What happened to the claw? Is the claw there now? The claw's there now. Why is the claw there now? Wait a second. This chamber is labeled Zaphod B. That's shameless. And a confirmation. I didn't know there were that, such explicit inside jokes here. We got Hookster. We got... Can't look at that one exactly. All right. No more reports there. Warning. All personnel NORAD Delta Sub A3. Sub A3, is that where we were previously? Why is the claw in this position now? Loading claw operation. Move claw to location, then choose action. Is the claw's grab function currently engaged? Looks like it is. No, maybe not. Ok, 
Okay, that still makes no sense. Except that now it's going to this position when it's finished. But why? Our energy is still doing just fine. It's like we have infinite energy. Our sub is just floating there. And this sign says docking bay A4. Which it always has, right? Steve says, I like that we don't know if we are in a completely different place or just where we was before. Exactly. It seems that we are in the same place. We can confirm that by the presence of this guy on the right here. Wait, this says Delta Station. Wasn't it Alpha Station before? Yeah, and this was blocked. And this station seems to have a robot in it. We are not going to mess with that door. No. Maybe we can enter this door at Delta Station. Nope. So we have traveled. You think they'd mix up the design aesthetic a little bit, maybe? So we shouldn't be able to go in here either, should we? Defense Command Post on Security. Identicality confirmed. Defense Command Post on Security. Access denied. We can't go in there either. You are currently in the connecting corridors of the NORAD 6 station. Sleeping gas has been introduced into the ventilation system, rendering all personnel unconscious. Shoot. Now there's another guy there. We're once again being detected there. Do you think there's anything else I'm missing? In order to restore history, you must prevent the launch of the nuclear strike toward the World Unification Talks in Gorbistan. Hmm. We still have the good old crowbar. We haven't put it to any use yet. We're not going to be hacking into any. If I could pinch a guy's ID card or something, doesn't it seem like I could maybe get through a door that I haven't been through yet? Should I pressurize this area to maximum pressure? Yeah, so these are different compartment names. I should have caught on to that. If only I could pressurize the area containing the robot. Warning. All personnel. Contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. Warning. All 
ventilation system. There wasn't cases under the window there. Warning. All personnel um, detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. You may have to be more specific, Steve, Warning. but I will certainly All check. Contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. Warning. All personnel detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. Wait a second. Is this a door I hadn't tried? Warning. Post on security alert. Access denied. Warning. All personnel. Contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. <laughs> that one's not even an access denied. This does look a better lead, but I'll ask you again if it comes down to it. You are standing before a damaged but secured door which leads to the Nuclear Launch Authorization Center for NORAD. Warning. Thank you, AI. Let's check the other side first, then. Defense Command Post on Security Alert. Access denied. All right. And if push comes to shove, we have our crowbar. Defense Command Post on Security Alert. Access denied. We can't get in, but we can zoom in. What do we got? <clears throat> Please hold for 10 seconds for Alpha Sector Retinal ID scan. Oh, boy. Security alert. Security alert. Unauthorized access attempted at retinal scan in Delta sector. That's not so good. Warning. All personnel That's crow bit. contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. We're not crowbing Warning. anything here. All personnel contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation systems. What we really need then is to get the retina All of another human. Apparently nothing is after me though. All hmm. We're crobin, we're crobin. I wonder if we could, could travel back if we wanted to. Okay, let's... Equal pressure between this chamber and submarine dock. Equalize pressure before entry. How's it going, VGA? Some objects may implode. Warning. All personnel. Contamination detected. Nice to see you pop in. It's going beautifully here. We're playing a a uh, a game I've wanted to play for the first time for quite a while. The plot is rather brilliant, as are the mechanics and the narrative consistency, but I won't get into it at the moment. We're focused on a more specific task at the current time. I used to have a Journeyman Project game back in the day for the Macintosh. This is Pegasus Prime. It is a remake of the original Journeyman Project, also known as the Journeyman Project Turbo, I think. So you know a little about what this is. Yep, that's the game you had. And I have only just checked out the original game since the first session of playing this one. I am fascinated. I, well, the first game in the series I played was Journeyman Project 3, the latest and greatest, and I'd never played anything before that. So this is kind of an exciting dive into history for me. There was no case under the window, confirms Dagger. Steve, thank you, sir. We can't even look at the screen now. That would seem to be an indication that we're not leaving. That makes the challenge of getting a retinal scan right a little bit more difficult. Can any of our biochips help us with this? Not that I can see. Hmm. Unless there's something in one of these compartments we can use. Nothing here. 
personnel, contamination detected in NORAD air ducts and ventilation system. I suppose we can probe open one of these. Switching your inventory items is a little bit cumbersome, I must say. Probe are any of the lockers? What about small tools and stuff? I haven't really been looking through every single one of these things. Small arms. We don't need arms, we need eyes. <clears throat> ah, and the duty roster is different. Looks like the shifts are pretty much identical. But we got Wynn, we got Horde, we got Zed. Maybe we should check out that body. What if we hear respirators? That could be useful. First aid. Okay. Where was the body? Upstairs? Maybe we need to take another trip upstairs. That's quite a roundabout way of opening a door, I must say. You know, requiring your workers to have retinas is pretty messed up. People without eyes just can't work here? You would think. Maybe they get, like, an artificial retina just for that purpose. That would at least make it work, wouldn't it? Jordy need not apply. He has eyes, but you know. Yeah. Don't know whether he has retinas. We're not going to be crowbarring this robot. Let's spy on him for a moment longer. What's he doing? Is it just about the nuclear strike? Where's our body? Is it right beneath us there? Okay. Crowbar the body. Let's also try... There's nothing else here that would be good on a body, right? Beverage glass on the body? And unfortunately, we can't really get close to it. PGA, well, it's been forever since I saw this game. I can't even remember half of it. Yeah. And they've worked in the cast, which was added to the series later, into this remake. Put the eye in the glass. I would love to do that. But I don't think so. I think it might be time to jump. Let's lock ourselves in the control room and jump from there. That will also serve as a test to see whether we return to this area next time back. Who knows what other, what other helpful things we may have been leaving on the table. Let's do a quick save for good measure as well. Downloading. All right. Wonder if this display will alter when we accomplish something more significant. Can we go to the present too? No, because we're at the present. That would explain that. I also wonder. Can we zoom out of this window? Can we get out of here? No, I guess not. Wow, this is our home. All right, let's head to the third and final time. 2310, eight years before the present, Sydney, Australia. You 
are about to travel to the World Science Centre in New Sydney, Australia, in the year 2310. In the corrupted history, an influential scientist, Dr. Enrique Castillo, is assassinated during his speech at the Symposium on Alien Contact. Without his impassioned arguments for the benefits of sharing culture with other races, the sentiment of the scientific community toward alien contacts swings to an isolationist attitude drastically altering history. That's a lot for only eight years, but, you know, things can happen quickly. Let's time jump it up. Is this going to be a bit of a nicer place? That would be nice. Oh man. Agent 5, you have just been shot with a dart coated with an unknown toxin. Your vital signs are beginning to fluctuate. You never know whether it's a good thing or not. It might kill us to remove it. Let's try and remove it. Your biosuit was able to filter out all but seven micrograms of the toxin. The substance is a lethal neurotoxin and must be neutralized quickly or you will perish. Well, let's drink the rest of our ale. No options there. Let me pause for a moment since time is of the essence. Dagger Steve said, can you get stuck in this game if you have missed something or does the game design not allow that? I'm going to say it doesn't. I'm not aware that it does. I know that the Journeyman Project 3, by the time we arrived there, the game was a little bit more humane and in a mist-like fashion, it wasn't really possible to steer yourself terribly wrong. But I'm not sure. I haven't found evidence that you can really screw things up. You can certainly die. We know that. Lexi says, I take 150 micrograms of levothyroxine. If this is anything like levo, just eat or drink something and it'll mess that poison all up. I'm guessing it's a little harsher than that. And also, yes, the robot did morph. Not sure exactly what's going on there. Maybe he was just scouting for somebody from the TSA. Prepared for, quite the, for, for exactly this eventuality. But we know that that humanoid form is not a civilian, so I'm guessing that it's okay if we can, if we want to attack him. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that is. Compound <clears throat> analyzer. Ah, that might help. Let's see if we can analyze the dart. Place compound to be analyzed into the analysis chamber. Thanks, Australia. Nucleonic compound analyzer SL100A. Sinclair Laboratories. Oh, that's the machine. Assessing polarity. Checking for nuclear emissions. Evaluating molecular structure. Scanning polypeptide chains. Chemical complex dimahydronate based liquid tranquilizer. Sending analysis information to molecular compositor. Uh, we're gonna have to look at a compositor now? Transferring argon from canister to reservoir. Oh boy. Ready to discharge argon into smart alloy chamber. Does that mean we can refill our oxygen mass? Not that that's the most important thing at the moment. Start. Start. Composer, lamp. Composer, lamp. What in the world? Rather odd. It is now safe to retrieve your key card and disengage the argon canister. Okay, we're still poisoned, right? What about this guy? A message machine. Dr. Sinclair, your messages have been forwarded to your office. I'll just take whatever this is. Nitrogen canister. 
All right. <laughs> Lexi says, I'm going to change my series voice to an Aussie accent now. Still can't find the molecular compositor. This is apparently Elliot Sinclair's office. He's the father of time travel. What's he doing here? I guess he does live in the present era, doesn't he? We've just never met him. Sinclair Laboratories Molecular Synthesizer Interface SL100C-1. There we go. Now completing download of molecular information from compound analyzer. Diamond hydronate is a relaxant commonly found in sleep and health aids. In combination with other drugs, its effects can be fatal. It is used as a base for many different forms of tranquilizers. There are antidotes known for several diamond hydronate based tranquilizers, all of which are members of the Thorazine family. Boop. Three Thorazine base molecules have been pre programmed. These molecules are stable. Variations must be selected manually. In the event that an unstable compound is being created, you will have to begin again. After all three molecules have been designed, an antidote can be synthesized. Alright, let's get to it. Base molecule number one. Add compound components to main structure. Base molecule number one. I guess that meant wrong. Do we need to visually analyze this thing and create it? Or are we adding to what we see here? Base molecule number one. Okay. Ah, yes, there it is. Yeah. Almost had it, maybe? Base molecule number one. Yeah. Base molecule number one. So that one adds itself there. That adds itself to the end of that. There we go. We need to keep going, huh? Yeah. No. Base molecule number one. Thank you. Yeah. Is this really just guesswork? Base molecule number one. Okay, that narrows it down. Energy level, 50%. Base molecule number one. Thank you for the warning. Our energy is depleting rapidly here. Base molecule number two. Base molecule number two. The same order? Yeah. Lexi could use your help here. <laughs> base molecule number two. I forgot the precise order. Um... Really? And then it was CY or was it YC? It was CY. Base molecule number three. Based Thank molecules you. Molecules have been designed. Building base molecules. Bonding additional molecules. Synthesis complete. The synthesized compound will appear in the molecular synthesizer. Oh my god. And that would be over here, would it not? Lots of lurking and working. Oh, thanks, VGA. Appreciate the update. I'll just take that. Let's down it. Seems like we're okay. Can you confirm this AI? You are in the Molecular Biology Laboratory in Research Wing S4C of the World Science Center, New Sydney, Australia. Is there anything else here we can take?
Let's see before our energy runs out if we can... Oh. I guess we just took another sip of antidote. Isn't that awfully nice? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could do this? Oh, what have we got? Inventory full, removing non-essential inventory item beverage glass. All right. We have Elliot Sinclair's key card. That's pretty good. This is a security level eight key card with built-in photo identification. It is registered to Dr. Elliot Sinclair. Sinclair is also present at this conference. So yes, it is correct that he's in this time zone. I know, I like our old beverage glass. The beverage glass was our silver unicorn. Okay, let's keep exploring while we can then. But if our energy hits red, we're gonna leap out. That's just a hologram of the robot? Thank you, lab. How fortunate we were able to synthesize an antidote almost immediately for ourselves. It's quite the doorway. Check this place out. This is a science center? Oops. Thank goodness he was distracted. attendees must check in at the main reception in the auditorium complex. Biorhythms of life forms detected nearby. Extreme caution advised. Thank you. This is a bit of a maze. viewing area. Go and get your lanyard. You don't see me. You don't see nothing, man. Am I gonna have to remember the layout here? And is one of these guys, or all of them perhaps, an imposter? Perhaps some sort of assassin robot figure? see. These are all doors along here? Oh, hello. Hey, who are you? Security, we have an unauthorized visitor in lab building four. Once again, I add, I acted before. Yep. I acted before listening to my, my, my AI. Obviously out of place and without identification, you were stripped of your biotech interface and escorted off the premises. Avoiding human contact would have prevented this. So would meeting up with any living thing ruin things? Like if you walk past a dog that stops to sniff you, hold up its owner, which causes its owner to be late? Oh, I see. Would that hold up its owner, which causes its owner to be late for the seminar, locked out, and then... In a bad mood, and he has a cob badge. You have an eye patch? I think that is an implant that equips us for time travel reconnaissance stuff. Maybe that's what's allowing us to do the thermal scans and things. Okay, let's hit continue. This time, we're not going to do that. The guy's just going to stand back there and wait for me, and no thermal scans this time, huh? Thanks so much for that, AI. Oops. Once again, let's just do it. Nice eyepiece. Do you belong here? <laughs> Looks like that guy noticed too. Once again, the AI was warning us. Continue. So I'm going to step and wait from now on. 
biorhythms of life forms detected nearby. Extreme caution advised. So this is just about staying away from people. Dr. Terrio is currently at the conference. Keycard is required for entry. Ah. So maybe we can get into Sinclair's office. Dr. Glenna is currently at the conference. Keycard is required for entry. And these are all doors to offices. This laboratory is open to of course, because they're green and only. gelatinous. One step at a time, folks. Biorhythms of life forms detected nearby. Extreme caution advised. But they don't happen to walk out unless you happen to walk toward them. That's always good. Now we're at the other end. So if we go this way, and then just two doors down, we should be at Sinclair's lab. Uh, Sinclair's room, which hopefully is different from his lab. Right? Dr. Elliot Sinclair is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. We just wave it around, I guess. In we go. Yeah, he's at the conference. Our energy doesn't need, seem to be fading nearly as quickly as it did before. I wonder what governs that. Well, he has a cool office. Check this place out. interesting thought today while working on the contact-sensitive smart alloys project. It's given that all elements behave in a manner that is consistent with their atomic properties. For example, it is consistent for manganese to bond with barium cobalt in a very particular way under certain conditions. In a sense, these universal instruction sets are similar to the DNA which regulates the behavior of all cells in biological organisms. This being the case, it's conceivable that any non-organic matter can be programmed to respond at the molecular level to a set of predetermined instructions and instruction codes. So imagine a lamp which upon command could take the form of a chair, a table, or even a work of art. Imagine the possibilities that. are infinite. I'm confident that a proposal to do further research in this direction will be met with approval. I've seen this actor before because I played Project 3. I like him very much in this character. I haven't seen him back when he was still doing, you know, these initial research phases. But this time, and only this time, did I immediately recognize him as a character in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, I'm pretty sure. Not the only actor in this series for whom that's been true. Rather unsurprising. Okay, he just talked a little about morphing, but let's hear his next entry on that. This month has been fraught with discoveries about the morphing process. We learned how to morph all of the elements, but only after we realized that a certain few of them are immutable. Specifically, the inert gases like argon and krypton, well, because of their unique electrochemical properties, they simply are immutable. Even worse, these elements actually interfere with the bonding of surrounding molecules and bring the whole process to a halt. On the plus side, we have also discovered <laughs> that if proper care is taken, even organic matter could foreseeably be altered in form. Yeah, Patrick Stewart was walking the corridors back there. He was just doping around. So argon halts, halts the morphing process, A. Eh? Oh, he has something to say about time bending? Hmm, I'm so surprised. This journal is, beyond a doubt, the most important of my career, as today marks my first success 
in the application of time distortion theory by creating a localized neutrino acceleration matrix and I was able to bend time for just a fraction of a second. Anything entering into the distortion field slipped back in time for just a moment, creating a visual effect similar to light refraction in water in a swimming pool. It may, it may not seem like much, but it's truly more than any physicist could hope to achieve in a lifetime. And while it may be eons before there's any practical application of this theory, everything great was achieved one small step at a time, and this is definitely the first step. Gosh, that actor really encapsulates the, I don't know, sort of ineptly expressed passion that you find in actual, uh, you know, professors and scientists, I think. I'm very pleased with that. And as it relates to the plot, presumably this date was before time travel and the TSA were conceived. So that's good. How do I get out of this? There it is. It is now safe to shut off your system. That's a fun little joke. Messages. The promised messages. Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. White again. I still haven't received results from those morphing tests that I needed the other day. I know you're as excited about this breakthrough as I am, but if you expect to get any credit in the upcoming scientific journal, I'll need to see some practical work from you very soon. Give me a call. Angry, Irish, and slightly Nordic, perhaps? Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. Walczyk. I'm calling to check up on our progress after the new neurotransmitter equalizer that I prescribed. I'm afraid that the stress you are under may be a bit much even for this increased dosage. But still take only two a day even if you are experiencing the anxiety attacks or rapid mood swings like we had last week. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Is that like... Like Scandinavian Dutch tastic, yeah, and of course wig. Everyone in this game has three traits. It's just a matter of finding out what they are. So it sounds like Elliot Sinclair was under a little bit of stress, and maybe he was neglecting his duties as they pertain to the morphing project. Let's see. Accent, face, and exist? Is that another one of those darts? Oh, wait a second. Did Elliot Sinclair not like... I think this is the this is the guy who made the convincing peace arguments. He's the one who's going to be assassinated. Oh. Oh. It's not Elliot Sinclair who's doing the meddling, is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Who knows? Wait a second, what is this? Snake? Cactus and snake? Hello, snake. Not a lava lamp, snake lamp. Okay, what if we turn left here and then go here? <clears throat> what are these then? Welcome to the symposium on alien contact at the World Science Center in Sydney, Australia. The primary purpose of this conference is to allow the scientific community a forum to exchange ideas and opinions about joining the symbiotry of peaceful beings. The primary debate will take place in the main auditorium complex on Wednesday at 9 o'clock with keynote speakers and world-renowned scientists Dr. Elliot Sinclair and Dr. Enrique Castillo. The debate will be followed by meetings and conference rooms where the many discussions revolving around this volatile issue will be held. 
Information on discussion groups will be available at the conference check-in at the entrance of the main auditorium. Accommodations are being provided at the New Sydney Metro Cosmopolitan Hotel by the Shuttleport in New Darling Harbour. Thank you. Have a wonderful conference. Well, I said everyone in this game had three traits, but that person clearly only had one. Look, man, listen, it's really important that you look straight ahead, deliver your lines. Do not, I repeat, do not blink. Yes, we can only look at that one pamphlet. Also, that music, I think, Energy was... Energy level, 25%. Yeah, I think we might have to jump out of here. 